So we've covered off relevance. But what is materiality? And how exactly is it connected to relevance? Remember that relevance means that information must have the capacity to change the mind of the stakeholder. If information is relevant, then it makes a difference in decision making. Materiality in accounting is defined as a quality of being relevant or significant. It speaks to how important a piece of information is. Therefore, information that is material is relevant because it has the capacity to affect the decisions of the stakeholders. What guidelines are provided in accounting to aid in determining when information is material? There's actually little to no guidance provided. That's because materiality depends not only on the dollar amount of the financial information, but also on the importance of the information. Accountants are expected to use professional judgment to determine what is material, and therefore relevant, and what is not. So materiality is not just some dollar amount. It's a concept that must be placed in context. Let's see if I can give you an example. Imagine that you're crossing a busy street in a city and there are a lot of people around you. The walk signal is flashing, indicating that the light is about to change, so you and everyone else has to hurry across. You look down halfway across the street and you see a nickel, five cents, on the ground. I can't use a penny because in Canada we eliminated the use of pennies in 2012. But you see a nickel, five cents, on the ground right there in front of you in the crowd of people crossing the street at the very last minute. Do you stop to pick it up? If your answer is yes, then a nickel is material to you because it had the capacity to change your decision, which was to walk quickly across the street. Five cents is material to you. If your answer was no, you wouldn't stop to pick up the nickel. What amount of money would stop you? A dime? A quarter? A loony, which in Canada is a one dollar coin? A toonie? A two dollar coin? Maybe you wouldn't stop even for two dollars. If you wouldn't stop on that crowded street crossing with everyone else, then none of these amounts is material to you. Think then, what dollar amount in those circumstances would you stop to pick up? Got a figure in mind? Now let's see if I can change your mind. Imagine that you are homeless and it's winter and bitterly cold. You're always cold and you are always hungry. People don't carry cash as often as they used to and even washing car windows, you're not collecting enough money to eat regularly. You've just finished washing car windows on one side of the street. So this evening, cold and hungry, you're crossing a busy street in a city and there are a lot of people around you. The walk signal is flashing, indicating that the light is about to change, and so you and everyone else has to hurry across. You look down halfway across the street, and you see a nickel, five cents, on the ground. Do you stop to pick it up? Has your answer changed? It probably has. That's materiality. It depends on the context that the stakeholder finds themselves in. It's not one set number or amount or even a percentage of some amount. Instead, it depends on the stakeholders and their situation. Something that is immaterial in one circumstance can be material under different circumstances. Materiality.